I want to talk about how to combine liberty training, clicker training, um, shaping, which is kind of like clicker training, to, uh, to work on head down. Working on head down with a lot of benefits. The very first of which is when your horse's head is down, they're a lot calmer. When their head is up, they're more nervous and looking. They're more nervous, excited, afraid, things like that. Head down means relaxed, calm. Also, serenity. Uh, this is serenity. My Tennessee walking horse, standard bred mare, tends to be pretty high-headed. Um, just basically based on her build and maybe earlier training. And uh, not only that, but she's pregnant right now, and she's had a couple injuries to her back and her hips, and I really want to help her get back into condition. This is about my second session, asking her to drop her head. We've done a little bit of liberty training um, and a lot of clicker training, but I just started it because she would drop her head and I would click and reward. Now, in the very beginning, I would walk around with her, put my hand down and kind of, see, I'm kind of putting my head down a little bit, and I'm kind of asking her to drop her head. This was done totally using clicker training, positive reinforcement, and shaping so that she would put her head down, I would click and reward. I wouldn't pull on her head to ask her to drop it or use any kind of devices at all. <clears throat> um, in this video, we tried to speed up a little bit and get head down, but it wasn't working. In uh, a couple minutes, you'll see the video from today. April. This video with the snow is from February. Um, in between this f snowy video and then the April video, there's only about one other session where I worked on head down. So you can see she learns really quickly. Basically, um, at the beginning, I would reward any time she put her head down. And then as she got better and better, I would reward her after she kept it down a little bit longer and a little bit longer. Basically increasing the duration. Uh, I love clicker training or positive reinforcement. The click tells the horse they did the right thing and food is coming. She understands this idea of training, this communication we've developed that says that you did the right thing and hold on a sec, the food is coming. Because I can't get the food to her mouth the instant that she does the right thing the click tells her, that was it, it's coming. Right there, she, she put her head down and you heard that click. That's what I'm looking for. Head down a little bit longer is what I'm looking for. And I just wait. There's no punishment. There's nothing she can leave at any time because this is at liberty. And so there she put her head down. Um, and every time she does it and she gets that click, she's going to try it again and again. Uh, now, one of the reasons, big reasons for me to do this with her uh, is for her to be conditioned uh, to help her build the right kind of muscles in her back and her hind end. But also because the last time I brought her to this paddock, which is the same paddock as in the snowy video, and tried to ride her, she was very upset to be away from her, the other horses. Um, because she's just been with them so much and I haven't been working with her consistently. So bringing her here and asking for that head down is helping her to calm herself down. Now, yes, I do have a halter and lead rope on here, but you'll notice the lead rope is loose the entire time. I didn't even really need it. Um, I just let her over here and let, left it on, partly because it's a little bit more of a windier day. Um, and I wanted her to be able to do this work. Uh, but I don't use the halter for anything. It's just it's just there. So you can see in this video, compared to the last one, she puts her head way down and keeps it down a lot longer. So I continue to reward for that. But then see how I'm asking her to speed up? I'm also asking her to drop her head while going forward. Again, because of how she's built and that she doesn't have a lot of muscle in her back right now, I want to build that top line up by asking her to put her head down and then go forward. This is going to help really build the right kind of muscle. All right, and again. So as she, I'm asking for the speed, I want to reward any time she puts her head down. Now, I'm, she, she often just tosses her head first like that, 
and I don't want to reward that. I want to wait for her to actually put her head down while going faster. Wait. There. That's what I want to reward when she starts dropping that head. Or if she goes faster without tossing her head. Hi. As you've seen, she often tosses her head when she goes faster, uh -huh. which is common, and I think it is a muscle issue for her. Muscle you issue for her, me. and I want to help her to get past that. Um, I want you to note, I do not have a whip in my other hand. She is learning to go forward off of voice cue and body language. Um, I don't watch for that. There's head down. And you hear me give that verbal cue. And partly you can't see my hand. I'll also drop my hand down low, asking her to drop her head. Um, that's kind of just the cue we've developed. It could be anything, but that's what I use. Um, now, as you do this, keep in mind they have, they could step on the lead rope, so be careful to keep it up out of the way. You have to be pretty quick with your hands to make sure that it's loose enough that um, she has freedom of movement, but she can't step on it, which is one benefit of doing it at Liberty, but you don't have to deal with that. Now, in a little bit, I am going to uh, do some stuff at Liberty after I switch this to this side, um, and she does really well. Um, and we'll talk about Liberty in just a couple minutes yeah. when I get to that. So this side is the side we haven't practiced as much on, so I'm a little quicker to reward. And when I ask her to speed up, she doesn't do quite as well because this is our less experienced direction. So here, I'm asking her to drop her head, and as soon as she puts it down, I'll click and reward. One thing you can't see very well from this angle is that when she does speed up and put her head down, she actually really starts using her hind end. You can see um, her using that hind end, which if you have a gated horse, this exercise is super valuable. A lot of people want to know what exercises they can do from the ground. Well, this is one of the best because a lot of people have difficulty getting their horse to drop their head when they speed up. And we are shaping um, that through this. Um, we are, we're teaching the horse to carry it themselves. Um, and so you could do this with any age horse, any, any breed, and, you know, it doesn't matter whether you have an Arabian or a quarter horse, or and you could do this head down stuff, and it's good for building the top line muscles. So you can see that she didn't want to speed up there, whether because she wanted to sniff the ground or she had an itch. That's okay. I'm willing to let her do that. I want her to have her attention on me, but it's okay for her to get distracted. She tossed her head again. There, when she dropped her head and neck a little bit, it wasn't a lot, but it was a little bit, um, that's when I, I praised her for that there. That was good. Um, but also by giving her food and chewing, it helps keep her jaw from locking up helps keep things loose. Just just a note about that. Notice I'm not pulling on her face. She was distracted by something over there and a lot of people are quick to pull the horse to them. I try to not pull on my horses at all. It, it does happen. Look at that. She kept her head down as she sped up. That was really good. Some of the best that I'd seen her do that day. Um, so that was excellent, excellent work from her on her part. Um, because even under saddle, she would tend to have really abrupt speed changes. She'd walk, and then I'd ask her to trot, and she'd like jump into this big trot. And I need her to do a slower transition. Well, this is working really, really well to ask her to do that slower transition before I even get on her back. So I'm excited to do this um, for a, a week or two and then um, try it under saddle and see how it works. There's the head down, looking for the speed up and head down. Notice I give her that loose rein, or lead rope, not rein. Yeah, right there. There she dropped her head. That's really good. And it also encourages her that she can speed up and then slow down and it's no big deal. We're going to change directions again. Look at that. That was really nice. Head down. Good. Much more consistent. Less head tossing. For her, I don't know where the head tossing came from. 
I think it might be uh, potentially a physical injury combined with muscle memory. I'm not sure. All right, so took the halter off. Nothing on her. See how she drops her head right away. Um, doesn't need the halter at all to do that. It's awesome. She did a great job there. Um, we're going to do this a few times at the walk um, and then also at the trot, and she's going to do really, really well at it. And then I'm going to ask her for just a little bit more, and it's going to be too much. And you're going to see it at that. And that happens with horses at Liberty, whether they're distracted by something around them, whether they found that the training was a little bit too much. Um, part of how I do Liberty training, and this is the really important part, it's one of the things that I think sets me apart from some of the other bigger name Liberty trainers, although there's plenty out there that I respect a ton, is that... I take the mentality that when we do liberty, the horse is allowed to make choices. Now, not choices that endanger us, but choices of whether to interact um, at all, whether to go eat the grass or um, leave. They're actually the gate straight ahead there where a cloud is going. That gate is open. We walk through it, and it's open. She could go out anytime she wants. And actually, there's a, a this paddock is actually pretty big. Um, and it's totally open and she could leave anytime she wanted. And I have to be okay with that. That's to me what liberty is, is the horse wanting to be with you. Um, and so here in just a minute, she's, I'm going to ask her for it and it's going to be a little too much. And she does exactly what I wanted her to do, which was go faster. And it was too much for her. So she ends up running down to the end of the paddock there. And it is... Uh, closed. She can't get back to the horses there, but again, the gate to the left is open. Um, but I, I basically will just stop and stand here. Um, tried calling her back, it didn't work, so then I'm just going to stand here. And just wait. She can't hurt herself. Girl, come on. Uh, she turned to look at me. Uh, basically, I see that she's looking at the dirt patch down there and looking like she's going to roll. So I just stand here and wait. And I want you to see that this is part of training. Mentally, in my head, I'm telling myself, it's no big deal. It's totally fine that she does this. I'm going to accept that. Um, but, but she needed to disengage a little bit there, or I pushed too much. Um, here, she just laid down to roll. But part of it is my fault. Did I push too much? Was she not ready for the next step? Did she need a break? And to be okay with that. Not to be like, oh, I can't believe she did that. No, that's the wrong attitude. And here she's actually going to come running. I'll back up a couple steps just to make sure I stay safe. But she comes running to me. Doesn't run me over. Oh. Oh. She clearly oh. had every intention of coming back. And then as soon as she kind of faced me and softened a little, I clicked and gave her a treat. And I want to reward her for coming back. Your horse will always get distracted or nervous about something. Always. Yeah. It's always going to happen. Um, and what we want to do is reward them for bringing their attention back and always relaxing. Your horse is always going to get spooked at something. Even the most bomb-proof horse will find something to be scared at. But if we can get it where they are comfortable relaxing afterwards, that's where it's, the magic happens. That's where it's so fun. And you can do the liberty work because the horses know that you're okay with them leaving and coming back. So we're just going to basically go do this again a little bit. We did the head down just to make sure she was paying attention. And this is a good time uh, to call it quit soon. To see how she basically came back, re-engaged. Re was willing to put her head down. Which, you know, what work we ask. So we're going to basically call that quits. Um, so to me, liberty is about allowing the horse those choices. Um, but you also have to build in training to keep you safe. Um... And so here she walked away, but immediately turned back. And I rewarded that choice where she came back to me. Um, I'm really excited to see how she does this next time. It'll be a few days before I can get back out there with her, and then depending on the weather. Um, but that was an accidental click. This is one of the most fun things about training is seeing the progress. Um, and I plan to get on her and ride her at some point. Um, but I want to do this training first. And I want, uh, when I get on, I want it to be this head down, this relaxed horse that is interested in what I'm asking her to do. And it's one of the things that I think sets you up to succeed, not only in riding 
uh, but bridalless. So this whole session has been about 13 minutes, I believe, close to that, um, that I got her out. It's actually a little longer than I would have normally thought it would have been, um, but that's okay. Uh, but she clearly was not physically tired, and uh, for being a windy day, I thought she did really, really well, and I'm very happy with the progress she made. Uh, so if you have any questions, I would love to hear it. I would love to know your thoughts about liberty training um, and, uh, <laughs> and, and how to work on this. And hopefully I'll have more videos coming. I have more horses that need this training. Um, but she's just an awesome horse. And um, if you guys work on this or do that, I would love to hear how it goes for you. And uh, good luck. Here you're going to see she's going to pay attention and stop when I stop. Um, stay with me, even though we're heading back to the horses. And uh, all right. <laughs> That's what it's all about, folks.